Good morning, Arizona. Good morning, America. Well, today is my birthday. Today I turned 64 years old. And I'm so thankful that God has given me the years to live to be 64 years old. I want to give God the praise and the glory for giving me a good health, keeping me alive and safe all these years. I also want to thank my mother that gave me birth. She, uh, she gave me birth on the 16th at 9.09 a.m. this morning. And I want to thank my daddy for being such a good father to me and giving me all the, uh, the uh, skills that I needed in life to be a good man. He wasn't educated like I was educated. Even though I wasn't educated, I had more education than he'd had. But I'm thankful that my father was a good man, a man of God. Well, a year ago, I was robbed. I went to go to Wells Fargo to uh, pull money to go buy me a truck. And uh, the person at Wells Fargo, uh, she gave out my personal information and I was followed home and robbed. And uh, today, or yesterday, I got this letter from uh, Wells Fargo, from the ECMO. And uh, it was uh, sent by Caleb L. Executive Officer Case Specialist, Enterprise Complaint Management Office. That's pretty an impressive position, isn't it? I wonder how many years that guy went to school to get that position. But um, basically they said, hey, tough luck. So, uh, so what if our employee gave out your information, should have bought security? Well, this is what I carry now when I'm at home. I carry my 10 millimeter. I'm speechless, I really am, that I have to carry a gun at home at all times because I was followed home and robbed. And it was all because of the negligence of Wells Fargo. So people, we are now no longer living in a safe country. We are living in a country that's full of criminals from other countries and they look upon us as uh, a threat to them. They hate us. They hate us. So don't be surprised if you go to the bank and you get followed home and you're robbed because that's what's gonna happen. You know, I lost money, but thank God I didn't lose my life. And maybe this was a tool that God will use in order to save lives in the future. I'm an old man, I lived my life. But it would be a tragedy for some young person to lose their life because of the negligence of the banks. They don't care. You know, the people who rob you, they'll spend it, and guess who gets the money back? The banks do. You know, to this day, they haven't even told me if the money was deposited. If it was deposited completely as $10,000, who deposited? They haven't shared that information with me. Why? Because they don't care, people. They don't care. So, uh, you know, I have to do business with the bank, but it's gonna be very limited. I've been spreading the word to all my relatives and friends what happened to me. And you know what? It's the company that's gonna end up losing more than I will because it's gonna get out to the public and the public's gonna lose complete trust in an institution that's supposed to protect us protect our money with all the modern technology the serial numbers that these bills have they would be able to track that money in the heartbeat if they really wanted to but they don't they don't want to it's a waste of resources on their end so uh, don't be surprised if you start seeing burglaries throughout this great nation increase don't be surprised if you start seeing old ladies assaulted their purses ripped off. Don't be surprised if you start seeing women raped at an incredible number. Why? Because we have individuals that are predators from other countries that are going to look at our women and they're going to they're going to want something from them. And it's not going to be a pretty sight. And we don't have we have a country that our leadership don't care about us. They're more concerned about protecting the uh, 
the identities of these illegal criminals over protecting our identity. These are our elected officials. Let that sink in. You know, like I said, I'm an old man. I'm thankful that God gave me the years to live. Maybe this had to happen in order for me to uh, expose the evil that's taking, ravaging our, our nation. And like I said, it's my birthday today and I'm happy. I'm happy because I got to live through that situation. I'm happy because I'm alive and healthy. I'm happy because I have a family that's healthy. I'm happy because I have friends, true friends, that love me. Not individuals that are after my money that'll fake their friendship just so that they can get something out of it. So I have a lot of things to be happy for. And I praise God for my life. I can't express to my Lord how thankful I am that he has given me. I grew up so poor. I grew up with nothing. I'm working in the fields. I remember going into Cesar Chavez's house as a little boy and I was having a dream about him, him and my father having a conversation at a corner of his old house in the projects in central Phoenix. And they were discussing the issues that we were having as a society, a Mexican Indian society, working in the fields. I remember the uh, crop dusting airplanes that would drop poison over us as we were working. I didn't know what it was, I was a child. But now that I'm an old man, I can, I can't understand how these individuals knew that they were dropping poison, DDT and all. My dad died of cancer because he worked in his field most of his life. And I, can tr I, I would have to say that the poison that they dropped on us was part of that reason why he developed cancer. But one day we will all stand in the presence of God and one day we will all answer for our sins. And all I can say to my Lord is have mercy on me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. I try to do the best things in life for my family and to pre please my Lord and Savior. And I fail him every day. But I'm so thankful that he is a loving God and that his grace will, will overshadow my shortcoming and for that reason I will continue to praise him until I give my last breath on this earth people wake up America is under attack America is in dire strait we will be defeated from within if we don't put our foot down and start demanding our government to start standing up for the American people it's our choice. We can be nonchalant and not expect and demand them to do the right thing. Or we can just look the other way and roll over and die. The choice is ours. Every generation has had to make a tough call. It wasn't easy for the people in 1776. It wasn't easy for the people in, in the Civil War. It wasn't easy in the, for the people in World War One, World War Two, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Afghanistan War. And it's not going to be easy for us now that we're being attacked from within. God bless America and thank you for watching my video. And once again, I want to thank my Lord and Savior for giving me the years, the health, and my beautiful family. Praise God.